sent for that team with several abilities here in the bottom under the head pressure for the hill, but that just provides us the ability to get the water back to the edge. <clears throat> this engine is, like all the other big engines, is starting with compressed air. If you saw the starting of the engine over here, the Blaisdell in the city, the operator had to operate the air valve by hand to time the air stop. This has a little rutting valve located right here, the little hole uh, on the side shaft. And as the side shaft turns at the proper time, it pushes on the buffer valve and it gets scared to the cylinder. Now, with these engines, the piston has to be just below the top of that center of the power strip in order to apply the compressed air. Uh, Nick Scrimatisse, he also, uh, about 15 minutes ago, he started this Della Verne over here, which is an oil engine. To start that, you roll it backwards, hit compression, and it pops going in the correct direction. And for the first time ever, he started it on the first try. So let's, let's give a hand to Nick for all the good work that he does. We'll brag on our engineers. Uh, this has a fly ball governor, and uh, uh, so and the way the fly ball governor works is the engine speeds up, the fly balls spin out, and it reduces the amount of fuel coming to the engine. This is how you see it. And the way low tension ignition works, you can see there are movable points here. And most of the time, the points stay apart. And when they call for ignition, the points briefly come together, creating a current through a coil. Immediately, the points separate again, and that high current through the coil becomes a high voltage in the coil, which jumps the gap in the points, creating the spark. So low tension ignition has an igniter like this. If you see something like this on the side of the engine, which on this engine, is located right behind the magneto. If you see something like this, you know you're looking at right here. You would attach the extension handle to the spanner wrench, hook the wrench up to a retaining ring that is here on the cylinder, and he would hang a bucket of bolts, a five gallon bucket of bolts off the end of that, and this spent eight hours vibrating along all day long on Friday, but after eight hours, the operator figured that it was back to factory specifications for the proper tool. So that's, that's how the tight end is done. But, uh, that about goes through the explanation that we have on the engine. Uh, Nick, whenever you are ready, uh, one more oil. One more oil. And uh, that's, the, that's what a good engineer does. Now, you know, I ask people, or people ask, what do our volunteer engineers do in real life? Nick is a CNC programmer. And uh, so he works with very high-tech equipment. And then as realization comes, he works on real low-tech equipment that is very old. Uh, is there anybody here for the first time? Everybody, is here for the first time? You are. Make sure after this engine runs here, go out this door and down the road to the left and take the path that goes up to the long red building on the hill. That's where the snow engine is. That is the largest operating engine from 1917. It is 600 horsepower. 18 foot 20 ton flywheel uh, and compressed natural gas in the gas fields in western Pennsylvania. The entire engine weighs 140 tons and it's 75 feet long. So I'm mean, sure you see that start. That's scheduled to start at 1130. And there's 275 yards in the, in the foundation of the snow, right? This has, what, 80 yards of concrete? 
This one, it's, it's got a little bit of concrete to it. This, this foundation goes another, what, six feet down into the ground? So it's, you know, we put a lot of concrete in this. You know what? Who does all the work on these engines? We do. When you, when you get up to the top of the hill, you'll say, well, who put the water tank up on top of the water tank base? And then you'll look and see, what's the year of that crane up there? Do you happen to know, Nick? There's a 1954 crane up on the hill, which I we heard start and run yesterday. So we have people that can run the crane, and it's got an extension on it, which they use to set the tank. So we're all volunteers. The only thing we ask of you, we appreciate your admission today. If you care to make a donation or buy something at the gift shop, anything that you provide to us will extend the operation of these engines. You'll see we have a lot of young people out there in this equipment. He's no more than 15 years old. Oh, wait, you're older than that. But, but his, his word of the day sometimes gets cantankerous. It's the first one of the month. It opens the main air supply valve, opens the valve, brings it to the cylinder, adjusts the fuel. He's listening. Thank you. 